The video you're just about to watch is actually with Richard Dunn, who was a guest on a recent audio podcast. And I should say that it's free to subscribe, it's free to listen. Um, you can either do that by clicking on the links that I send out on Twitter or by subscribing by searching Forever Bluey and Cheeseman on, well, SoundCloud is the host platform, but also iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get the audio podcast from. We do it every week and we have a variety of guests. So this is an extract from that video because we do the recordings on Zoom and it's with Richard Dunn talking just after the recent game against Newcastle United about Kevin De Bruyne, about Sven Joran Eriksson and all sorts of things. Hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe and uh, and get involved in listening regularly to the audio podcast. Here's Richard Dunn. City can go and win the league without, I think, Erling Haaland, probably without Ruben Diaz. I think with De Bruyne in the team, he just pushes them over the line ahead of any team in the Premier League, but even in, in European competitions, he's the one that I think can really make a difference between now and May. And the first half was, was was entertaining. Newcastle were a bit more involved in the first half. Um, I thought I thought City played really well. Um, they obviously had those couple of minutes where they conceded the goals, but apart from that, they they played reasonably well. They played a probably a higher line than they normally do. Um, certainly, with just the two main defenders in, in, uh, at the back most of the time but then the second half they just completely dominated it and they they, they just blew Newcastle away at times and you were once they got the equaliser you just started going it was inevitable that we'll get the winner it just seemed to take an age for it to, to come but um, finally it did and I mean the, the last gasp winner but it was a very much deserved victory I thought they they done really well and certainly deserved the three points there are, you'll be aware of the fact that City san, uh, fans sing a song about the great defence, the best team in Europe. Um, and and I personally think that the defence is superb. However, when City concede a couple of goals, there is criticism. Do you think that criticism is fair? Because City's game is all about possession. They very rarely uh, even give the opposition a chance. And when the opposition score, everybody suddenly starts saying, that's no, the defence. But uh, I don't see it that way. How do you see it? No, I think for them to, to be as dominant as they are, they need the defence to play a high line, they need to be pushed up. And normally you will have one will move forward and he sort of kept with three centre halves around the back line. But yesterday, both full backs pushed up really high, which just left a lot of space for Diaz and, um, for, and Aki to, to cover. So the space was out wide. And um, when you play in the Premier League and you play a line like that, eventually intelligent footballers will find spaces. They'll start to time their runs right. And Newcastle done it really well. I'm surprised probably more teams haven't tried it like that. Um, and trying to avoid the midfield, just get it long. And Newcastle had the players who could first find the pass and second had the speed to get in behind. And I mean, even still, both goals were taken really well by Newcastle. They were great finishes. And when you when you play a City, do you... It's amazing that they don't concede more chances, really, um, because of the how how high they play. And yeah, from time to time they will got, get caught out. But I think when you're winning trophies and you're winning Champions League and things like that, you have to look at how strong is your defence. Because without a strong defence, you're not going to be able to do anything like that. And City have proved time and time again that they've got individually they've probably got the best defenders in the league. And I think as a as a unit, they're they're as solid as anyone. I mean, even you go with Rodri in front of them is the best defensive midfielder in the world. So I don't think there's any defensive problems. It's just from time to time you may get caught out. And certainly, yes, there was a change of system in a way with the, the fullback pushing up. So, yeah, the, there was gaps there at times. But overall, in the second half, you didn't see them at all. I suppose you've already answered this really in the way that you've said that. But um, City play a different type of defending arguably, than when you were playing in the City team. Do you think you would enjoy playing in this, this City defence? Um, I mean, it's risky. It's a high line, so it's, uh, you're always looking over your shoulder, always thinking, right, kind of, I need to run back who's, who, who are we marking, where's the spaces that we need to, to cover. Um, but yeah, to play in the in the team would be would be an incredible um, feeling, I think, for any, any centre-half, any sort of ex-footballer you think if you had the opportunity to play in that team could you and 
basically the, the fact can you pass the ball 10 yards well then you can probably play in the team maybe you can read the game and you can pass the ball a few yards then I think most players would be capable of it but the ones that are playing there now what amazes me every time that I watch them is the passing the quality of the passing it's like 10 yards at 20 or 30 yards the ball doesn't come off the ground it rolls across the floor perfectly it's the weight of pass but the appreciation for the next person to control it so it's it is elite, elite level, really. But um, yeah, I would like to think that I would, I would have enjoyed being able to to be part of it. But obviously, it's not to be. Back to Richard Dunn in just a moment. But I just want to say a big shout out and thanks to both Amar Development UK and to Counting King, who are R and D tax specialists. They do lots of things for businesses that save them a fortune. You can search them on Google and find out all about them and make contact with them and tell them that. Forever Blue, Ian Cheeseman sent you and they'll do a, a great job for you, I guarantee it. I've seen what they do and they are brilliant. Anyway, thanks to them. Thanks to you for watching. Back to Richard Dunn. The pitches in the Premier League are the best anyway. Um, I've been to games in France and I've seen the pitches and you, they're, they're good, but they're not that level of, of what you've got in the Premier League. Even you go to the academy grounds and the pitches are, are amazing and it's just crying out for the ball to be rolled across them. Um, I mean the intensity one, yeah. You I mean you have to run certainly up in Newcastle in in the middle of January. You need to run, um, so the way that City moved the ball, Liverpool moved the ball really quick, and Tottenham moved the ball really quick. So um, I think the the level of football in, in in England has just gone through the roof in recent years. I think it's it's brilliant, and it's, this season especially has really enjoyed watching the league because there is so many good attacking teams and. I'm sure teams that, that Brazilian fans would, would love to be able to see on a regular basis. Well, he, he was happy to acknowledge that Pep is the best coach in the world. I don't think anybody can argue against that, can they? No, certainly. I mean, at the moment, he's the one that's evolving all the time. He's the one that's ahead of the game because people, as soon as they see him do something, they try and follow him and they try and, right, well, if City are doing that and they're winning games, game, they're able to try it. So if he stands still, he ends up getting caught by, by other coaches. So it's always little tweaks here and there and um, moving certain players around the field in different ways. And It's just, it's amazing how, how he keeps it so fresh and he keeps the players educated really on what he's doing because, uh, I mean, coaches are great and yesterday, but people talk about the amount of money that he spends, but the players that he's inherited, he's improved. The players that he's bought, he's improved. And I think that's what makes a real coach. Um, you've got 25 of the top 50 players in world football, potentially, in that squad. The the amazing footballers, all of them. And you never hear them moan, and they're always happy. They're always well managed by the, by the manager. And that, again, I mean, the success is there, and people put it all down to the tactics that he used and the players that he's been lucky enough to, to afford to buy. There's so much more in, to that with the, the man management of them and the education of the players is just beyond anyone I think I've ever seen as a coach. And you're well aware of the humour of City fans and I've seen today after Kevin De Bruyne's comeback game with an assistant and a goal, um, them replaying the video um, uh, from long ago of um, uh, Thompson from Liverpool and Merson from Arsenal, both saying that De Bruyne would sort of never make it and wasn't worth the, the 50 million. Um, he's proven them wrong somewhat, hasn't he? I mean, I, the way you know, because you've contributed to it, to the match day vlogs that I do. And on the way up to Newcastle yesterday, I called in at Heseldon in County Durham and I went to where Colin Bell grew up. He was my hero. I wrote his autobiography. Um, and um, I then went to watch the game. And you would argue that De Bruyne is probably the nearest thing we've seen to Colin Bell. He might be better now. That That's a debate to be had. Mm. But De Bruyne is the nearest I've seen. I don't know if you remember Michael Johnson at City who came through briefly and, and had a little period in the first team, but then he uh, was cut back by injury. But apart from Michael Johnson, Kevin De Bruyne is Colin Bell to me. Do you, can you see that that parallel? You must have watched Bell on, on sort of video on YouTube and stuff. I've seen clips of him, yeah, but I was never fortunate enough to to see real good footage to to compare them enough. Um, for me, I don't, I've not seen anyone in my time that that got the same qualities as what De Bruyne has got. He, he he seems unique in the way that he moves around the pitch, the passes that, and the vision that he's got is just incredible. And 
you look at what City have done over the last whatever six months while he's been out injured and I mean they obviously won the Champions League he had to come off early and that but he makes the best team in the world better which is an incredible thing to be able to do for any footballer to he's not just an important player he, he's the most important player because City can go and win the league without I think Erling Haaland probably without Ruben Diaz I think with De Bruyne in the team he just pushes them over the line ahead of any team in the Premier League, but even in, in European competitions, he's the one that I think can really make a difference between now and May. That he makes, we were saying last night, he makes, he makes the players on the pitch better. So, like that pass for Oscar Bob, Oscar Bob's first initial thought is, I'm going to come short for it. But because he knows De Bruyne is on it, De Bruyne has the ability to knock it in behind. His thought pattern changes and he goes, Right, I'm going to run in behind now. So instantly he's become a better player. He's received the ball and he's took the goal brilliantly. But I think when he looked at who's on the pass, makes him make that run that he made. I think it's, um, I think the Brian is, yeah, he, he almost taken for granted when he's playing every week. And the fact that he's been out for whatever, four or five months, it's just, it's just been brilliant watching him the last two weekends and seeing, seeing all that quality and talent coming back. And normally after that, lens of, uh, Layoff, it takes weeks to get back into the rhythm of things, but he's straight into it. He looks as good as ever.